Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a Synth DIY guy. If you like modular synthesizers, new technologies, sound design and music composition, you'll probably like this channel. So go ahead and hit like and subscribe. A few months ago, I was asked by Jim Matheson, aka Jack Plug, and Raf from Michigan Synthworks to create build and demo videos for Neutron Sound's new module, The Dust of Time. I gladly agreed, and they put together a package with everything I needed to build one. I didn't, however, expect this to become one of the most powerful and useful modules in my system. DOT is a full-featured synthesizer in a module, featuring a dual stereo oscillator with a variety of synthesis methods, as well as a TRS MIDI input, a VCA, a subharmonic generator, an effects section, four envelope generators, four LFOs, two chaos generators, gate generators and a gate matrix, four CV inputs and two auxiliary outputs, all configurable by the user. There's patch memory, which is only limited by the capacity of your SD card, the main output is in stereo and each pot has its own button and configuration page, so you can quickly adjust what you need without having to dive deep into a centralized menu system. I've been helping Jim develop the firmware too, so that it will be useful to musicians and sound designers in a wide variety of situations. In this video, we'll focus on building it. I'll make an in-depth tutorial video later, covering all of the features of this amazing module. Please note that full kits are not yet available, but you can get a panel and PCB from Michigan Synthworks and order the components from your favorite suppliers. There's the spreadsheet in the GitHub with some links to stores that may carry what you need. Also, while there's no official build guide, there's an interactive bill of materials that makes locating where parts go a breeze. You can either click on the part to see where it goes on the board or click on the board to see a particular part's designator. I hadn't seen this before and I wish every project came with one of these. There's also a Facebook page for beta users and builders, where Jim posts firmware updates and answers questions. Everything will be linked to in the video description below. Please note that this is mostly an SMD project. Nothing unmanageable though, if you can build an ornament in crime you can build this one. For SMD builds, I like to start with the ICs. I do it old school, with an iron rather than an oven or a hot air gun. I just apply a bit of solder on a corner pad, then reflow it while holding the IC in place with tweezers. Once it's secured and lined up, I solder the remaining leads. Often the solder will overflow and bridge neighboring terminals, so I always remove the excess solder with solder wick. My package was missing the MUX chip, so I had to do that later. After the ICs, I moved on to resistors, capacitors, diodes, etc. Again, simply tinning one pad, reflowing it while holding the part in place, and then soldering the other side. Once you're done with all of the SMD parts, it's time to install the Teensy. Start with the header pins that go inside the rectangle, where the Teensy will go. Note that one is not needed, the one with an X across the pad. I didn't get a set of male and female headers to make the Teensy removable, so I just placed the male headers I got and soldered the Teensy right on. This turned out to be a mistake. As wouldn't you know it, the one time I don't socket a Teensy, it turns out to be a faulty unit requiring replacement, which is a very rare thing to happen, but Murphy's Law, right? Needless to say, removing this one and replacing it was quite a delicate and time-consuming operation. So please do yourself a favor and get a set of male and female headers, so you can just pop it right out if needed. In my case, I just used the Teensy itself to line up the headers as I soldered them down. Don't solder the Teensy yet though, or you won't be able to install some of the potentiometers. Let's do all of the hardware first. Snap on all of the pots, jacks, buttons, and LEDs. Note that there are two versions of the panel. One has holes for a button per pot. 
I got the push button pods from Michigan, so my panel is the kind without the additional hose. If you can't source the push pods, make sure you get the extra buttons you'll need and the appropriate panel. Also, the MIDI input takes a stereo jack with the ground leg cut off. Make sure you don't mistakenly put a mono thonkicon in there. Once you have all of the hardware in place, place the panel and hand tighten a few of the nuts to keep it solid, then solder everything up. Now that you're done, remove the panel again. Now let's assemble the OLED display. Tighten the two nylon standoffs to the top part of the OLED with the corresponding screws. Push them through the holes of the PCB and tighten the nuts on the bottom side, then solder the terminals. Next, finish installing the Teensy. I soldered mine right onto the male headers, but you're smarter, so you just snap it on with your female headers that you bought, right? It may be tricky to line up the middle pins, but it's worth it. At this point, my missing MUX IC came in, so I soldered it on before moving forward. Now just tighten all of the nuts. I was sent two size banner nuts, regular for the pots, for which I used my Bifaco tool, and smaller ones for the jacks, for which I had no appropriate tool. I ended up using a small screwdriver to push turn the jack nuts, which led me to make not one but two nasty scratches on the panel. Ouch. Now push in the knobs. If they go too deep and make it impossible to activate the push action of the pots, remove the knobs and use a small screwdriver as a wedge to open up the knurled shafts a bit before putting the knobs back on. Once my knobs were on, I used a sharpie to try to mask the scratches I made. Now we just need to flash the firmware and calibrate the module. To flash the firmware, you need to download the Teensy Loader application and the latest hex file from the DOT GitHub. There's a trace on the Teensy that allows it to be powered via USB. If you have cut this trace, you need to power the module from your Eurorack power supply in order to install the firmware. If you have not cut this trace, you need to make sure the module is not powered on when you connect the USB, otherwise you can damage your computer's USB port. Just launch the Teensy Loader, click on Load Hex File and locate the DOT hex file. Power on the Teensy, be it USB or Eurorack, and press its button. Then click on the downward arrow icon on the app to program the Teensy and you're done. Disconnect the Teensy from USB and proceed to copy the contents of the SD card folder you've downloaded from the GitHub into your own SD card and insert it into the Teensy. Hopefully nothing went wrong and you can power up the module and start testing and calibration. Alright, so let's calibrate the dust of time. First thing I did was over here on system, I chose a preset, which is an init. Once I chose that, I can go back to oscillator and catch the potentiometer positions. This way you can be sure that your pots are where they should be for the preset. And then they respond perfectly, like right now, stereo wave folding going on here. Now we go back to system, press the left encoder to choose a different page and we want the config page right there. Now right here we should see 110 because I'm playing an A, right? So A is 110 to 20, 440, etc. So let's just play the next A. So it looks like I can go up a couple of cents to hit that 220 there. And then let's go back down. As you can see here on the left, I choose what I'm editing. And on the right, I edit it, right? So I can change sense and semitones, but this is actually the scaling. First, I'm making sure that I'm at 110. 
here's the range this is the actual scaling so if I go up I should see 220 if I go up again I should see 440 and there it is so this has already been calibrated right 880 oh well that's a little low so maybe we can do better right so let's turn that range until we see 880 Oh, 879, almost 880 seems to be the best we can do for now. But now let's go double check again. And it looks like everything is maintained, so we actually improved the tracking. And don't forget to hit save, of course. Saved configuration. And that stays there doesn't go away even when you turn off the module. It's now calibrated. I hope you liked this video. If so, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and consider giving me some money on Patreon to help me keep these coming. Oh, and hit the bell so you won't miss the in-depth DOT tutorial I'm working on. See you soon, and stay noisy!